Heather Hansen, the author of Unmuted, How to Show Up, Speak Up, and Inspire Action, her new book, a dear friend of mine for a number of years now. Uh, Heather, great to have you on the show. Welcome back. Hello, Glenn and Neil. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Absolute well, pleasure. Thanks for coming. Tell us about the book, Professional Communication. You're a coach. You're an author. You're a TED speaker. Uh, what uh, What is this book about? Well, it was born out of a number of things coming together at once. So obviously, started the pandemic, we all move online. And what's the one thing we heard on every single call multiple times? <laughs> <laughs> you're on mute, you're on mute. Uh, I now have a complex, like coming on just now, I'm on mute. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> As well, you should. I, you better not be I muted. I really can't be <laughs> muted anymore now that I wrote It would be book. ironic, wouldn't uh, it, if you were muted coming really on would. the show. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. Please, carry on. Um, but, but I realized during that transition that, yes, it became much easier for us to be on mute, to turn off the cameras, mute our microphones, hide in the background. But there were many of us who were on mute long before the pandemic, way before, sitting in meetings, not raising our hands, not speaking up, not sharing our ideas. Um, we're hearing from the same voices all the time. You know, mm -hmm. what got us here is about to push us off a cliff. And we've got to hear some new voices. And I realized, you know, in order to move our world forward, we need people to start speaking up about the things that are important to them, speaking out in the world, standing up for what's right, getting those people to turn off their mobiles in the theater. I mean, come on. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> so, so being unmuted, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just about, though, speaking up and making your voice heard. It's also about knowing when to press mute and listen to others and find that balance in our businesses and our families and our communities and in the world mm. so what what advice well I, I love this subject by the way but what advice did you do you give them to folks who feel like they don't get heard or there's that guy that we all know who he is uh, there's that guy or that woman in the room dominates every conversation how do you get yourself unmuted yeah. Well, the framework that I suggest in the book is one of conscious, confident, and connected communication. And if you think of this as a Venn diagram, which it is, everyone loves a good Venn, right? We have the conscious, confident, and connected communication. But what's really interesting is what's going on in those overlaps. So our connected and confident person who is not very conscious is that person we all know who is too loud, who is dominating the meeting, who is not conscious of the fact that no one else has spoken for 17 minutes and they're still going on, right? Mm -hmm. They're too loud. But then we have the people who are very conscious and very connected, have good relationships in the workplace, and are lacking confidence. And they tend to be too soft. They're turning down their volume. And it could be self-confidence or it could be skills confidence. Maybe they feel like, I'm not a good presenter. I don't know how to speak well. Uh, or mm -hmm. I have a heavy accent. I mean, that's a really typical one as well, especially out here in Asia. Um, so they're turning their voices down. But then we have that last piece of the puzzle that is conscious and confident, but they don't have good relationships in the workplace. There's no connection. There's no psychological safety, very toxic environment. Those people are on mute. And they're probably the biggest waste of our potential at work and in business globally. People who have those great ideas who want to speak up but are being silenced. So yeah, good question, Neil. How do we change it? We have to be really aware of all three areas because it's not a personality quiz, right? Oh, you're too loud. That means you're too loud all the time. Not necessarily. I can be too loud in many instances in English, but if I switch to Danish, I am definitely too soft. I lack the confidence to put my hand up or stand up in that meeting, even though I'm fluent in the language. So that's given me a certain degree of empathy for people who mm. might be struggling with language issues or not have that confidence. And that's just one example of what might be softening someone's voice. Yeah, can I just follow up on that? Because I, I watched your TED Talk and, and read some of your interviews, mm -hmm. and I love, love, love what you said about native speakers coming out to Asia and other parts of the world and making this, not even making, it's a subconscious assumption. It's almost a colonial arrogance, I would say, that yeah. everyone yeah. else is going to understand my accent, whether I'm from Liverpool, Manchester, Ontario, New York, Brooklyn, Sydney, Melbourne. They're going to mm -hmm. understand my accent. They're going to understand and keep up with the pace of my delivery. And the onus is on them to adapt yeah. rather than me who is a native speaker in Southeast Asia to make the changes necessary. And it comes back to your point, Heather, that 
sometimes people in the room may feel a little bit intimidated. I can't understand this Ang Mo's accent. Therefore, it's somehow my fault and I'm not going to call him or her out. And I love the fact that you say, no, the onus is on the native speaker to make adjustments for his or her audience. That seems to be the essence of what you were saying in, in your book. I love that. Is that fair? Yes, and I'm glad that you love that because a lot of native speakers hate that. They hate no, hearing me say that <laughs> because there is that. It's, it's hard is, to hear, isn't it, oh, for a lot of folks? It's hard to hear. It's like, wait, I'm going out in the world. We're all speaking my language. I am the good English speaker. You are the bad English speaker. Why should I have to change? And that's what I really try to flip on its head to say we need a new definition of the bad English because in a global setting, it is the native speakers that are the bigger problem. We come in using idioms. I even use them. I'm, I'm so aware of it. I don't know how often I say, um, and the whole nine yards, go the whole nine yards, right? Glenn, mm -hmm. I mean, perfect American football idiom analogy right. that we use, and it's so ingrained, or even something like touch base. People don't yep. realize it comes from baseball. Touch Swing base. for the fences. Touch yeah. Mean. Swing right. for the fences. Oh, yeah. Glenn, you're on, the, you're on the radio today. Knock it out of the park. I mean, right. these kinds of sayings and examples, we expect and just we forget that they're so culturally ingrained. And if you aren't a part of my culture, you're not going to get it unless you've watched a lot of American movies and spent time. And, uh, yeah. but, but there's a lot of these. And you don't really realize it until you learn other languages and start mm -hmm. experiencing theirs. My Danish husband will say something like, oh, well, there's no cows on the ice. Uh, okay, <laughs> which basically means like it's not a really big problem, you know. As long as the cows aren't on the ice, you're fine. <laughs> uh, that's good. Or, I like or that. He, or he went totally cucumbers. Well, that's like our to go bananas, right? Oh. So go totally cucumbers. Interesting. Uh, so we have we have lots of funny things like that that uh, get mistranslated. Mm. We're talking with Heather Hansen, the author of Unmuted: How to Show Up speak up and inspire action. Heather, I want to touch on another cultural element. Uh, you and I both do a lot of communication training and, and you show videos and examples of Western communication style and Eastern. Uh, I, have, I have a couple of videos. One I show of Steve Jobs on the one hand and, and Richard Branson and another of Unsung Suu Kyi uh, on the other side. And this idea of cultural awareness, not just in the language that one uses, uh, the idioms that you mentioned, but also the style of presentation and the sensitivity to what, ex what is expected in different cultures. Um, it is quite different. Those who are successful communicators understand that and are able to um, uh, use appropriate uh, styles and methods. Where do you, where does, what do you say about that in your book and, and where does that fit into this communication and speak up picture that you're discussing yeah 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 that's a big question because obviously especially in our part of the world we have to be really conscious communicators around the style of speech and how we're speaking especially right. in the western world we have this really strong bias of the loudest most eloquent speaker in the world is the best leader and mm. somehow we've managed to carry that out into asia as well that we expect our leaders to be well-spoken, to be loud, to dominate the conversations. And there's truly no correlation whatsoever between mm. the loudest person in the room and the smartest person with the best ideas. And that's what we have to remember. Now, I think it's really difficult to write any kind of business or leadership book because everything that we write is going to have a Western bias to it because we are Westerners. We come from there. Um, and what I was really trying to do in my book is balance that as best I could by remembering that it's not just about being that loud, eloquent person. It's about bringing your good ideas to the table, knowing when to mute and listen to others, being more inclusive and inviting people into the conversation, remembering how styles are different, that just because someone doesn't shoot their hand up in the air, it doesn't mean that they don't have a good idea. And perhaps if you ask them their opinion, they will be right. more willing to contribute. Or if you send out the agenda before the meeting and specifically say which areas you need people to talk about, this is how we can start to move forward. Hmm. Such a key point. I've seen it myself. The, 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 the cliche, loud Ang Mo comes into an Asian business meeting, very loud, very abrasive. And there's a reluctance from the rest of the crowd to speak up, which ties in nicely with a comment from L.L. Tan, who says, totally agree with Heather about women's self-censorship and staying mute, which is the reflection of many Asians 
to to not stand out or to shrink back in deference to the higher ups and to not go over their bosses. It's a great, great point from LL Tan. What would you recommend in that situation? It's absolutely a great point. We are self-censoring, and that's the main core message of Unmuted, is to stop self-censoring, to speak up in those meetings, have your confidence, know that you have good ideas. Um, we do have to look at the cultural situations and, and who we're dealing with. But this is also a culture. It's not just an individual thing. This is something leaders need to start looking at, is how do we involve more of our people's voices? How do we unmute our people? And the leaders have to walk the talk and yeah. work towards changing the culture of the company to unmute the whole company so we can be more inclusive, we can have greater innovation, and fewer misunderstandings as well. Yeah, that is that's a big one. It does it, in many uh, Asian contexts. It is going to have to come from leadership mm. to ask those questions because yes. it's just not part of the inherent culture to have mm -hmm. people who are lower down in rank bring up those things. So that, that's an excellent point, Heather. And I, I would hope that many of the folks listening to our show are in fact business leaders and would take that upon themselves to make some of those uh, those changes. Heather, we do have to leave it there, but thanks so much. Uh, we wish you great success. Uh, the book is Unmuted, How to Show Up, Speak Up, and Inspire Action. Heather Hansen, the author. Heather, if you might stick, uh, stick uh, on uh, Facebook Live for a minute and answer any questions that might come up or post your links, uh, we'd have, sure, be happy to. Happy to. Happy to. Thanks. thanks for having me. Thanks, Heather, and good luck.